inside the Warner Brothers archive, there are untold numbers of costumes, sets, and props, each with their own secrets known only to the artisans who made them. Fortunately for us, we have got the key costumes from Peacemaker here at the archive, and we're gonna get a closer look than ever before. You just have to pose like that while you're looking at them. We spoke with costume designer Shay Cunliffe about bringing these characters to life on the new series. Working on a show like Peacemaker, I feel like it's kind of rare. One, because you have a lead actor that literally will wear his costume everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a show that James Gunn put together and there's such a, he has such a vision for what he wanted this show to be. So what was it like coming into this show and working with a director like James mm -hmm. who had such a clear idea of what he wanted Peacemaker to be? It was interesting from start to finish because we were in COVID times. Mm -hmm. I met him on a Zoom interview. <laughs> we had all our design discussions over Zoom. He had managed to create this entire series in his living room yeah. without leaving the house. <laughs> well, the rest of us are like learning to roller skate or doing all yeah. kinds of silly things. James is like, I'm gonna create yes. a whole show. We're gonna make this happen. We had weekly design meetings the whole way through it mm -hmm. where everyone, special effects, uh, visual effects, art department, people doing the cars, locations, me, we all over a Zoom meeting shared our screen for to say where we were up to. These are the original Peacemaker comic mm -hmm. books which were given to me by our wonderful production designer, Lisa Soper. And they were just a mood inspiration. We had them pinned up everywhere to, to get in the vibe. But then we had to show the studio where we were going. Mm -hmm. So we created um, lookbooks. This is the one for, that the art department began very... <laughs> Which yeah. starts out right yes. in the front. We've got uh -huh. the tidy whiteies or like a little bit James of yellow. Loves, <laughs> yeah. That was a huge stunt challenge actually. Like when they, when James said I'd really like I've written it that he's wearing tighty whities for a huge sequence. Mm -hmm. I, I'm like, but it, it's freezing. We're shooting it at night. It's it's Vancouver in January. He's going to go out a window. Like, I, <laughs> please tell me you put warmers in them. <laughs> it, well, it, it was a hellish challenge, and I think James was very good at saying like, "Oh, John's cool. He'll <laughs> he'll handle it." And, and he, he, did. he did. He did. He was up for the challenge. The thinking, I think, for James is that it's a kind of magical realism. Doing the costume, how many mm -hmm. of them did you need to have to do an entire series? I think we ended up with about 20 Peacemaker costumes made, and they were like six weeks to make one, really, by Whoa. the time all the stages. We had a sort of Peacemaker Little Elves factory going <laughs> in Vancouver. This is your first kind of genre stepping into superhero world. I, I'm aware that they're very complex and detailed costumes. They're not, they're a whole other level. My first thing was to get hold of the fabulous costume designer, Judiana Makovsky, who designed the original. And she said, you know, you don't, it's true, you aren't gonna know lots of things. You'll find out, you'll know by the time you finish. Yeah. <laughs> but then when I got up to Vancouver, I had a workroom simultaneously working. I'd sent them the hero costume. I'd sourced the fabrics and sent it to them those simple white pants. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned that they were a special, very heavy twill with stretch that come from a fabric supplier in Yorkshire, in England. So I get hold of them and they had just this many yards left. And You're like, all of them are for us. All, after it came in, we had to get it all over dyed because it was too white. Mm -hmm. And then it went to a screen printer who puts all the texture in. It's, it's sort of rubberized printing on top of it. Mm -hmm. which, gives it its life. Mm -hmm. This gives it a dimension. So the Peacemaker costume was one you said you inherited, but mm -hmm. some of the other costumes for this show, you got to do from the ground up. Peter Safran, the producer, and James Gunn had already talked to Film Illusions, which mm -hmm. is run by an incredible artist, Russ Schinkel, about what they would need. And he had had his illustrators start to throw out ideas to them. Mm -hmm. So I approached it really as a designer in the way I'm used to, which is just looking at something and saying, I might change that or that. This was one of the early concept sketches mm -hmm. for Vigilante, but it seemed to me, referring to the earliest costume, it had much more of a through line and a slightly more vibrant feeling to it. So we ended up getting to that point where I sort of said, let's let's continue this all on through. Yeah, unlike Peacemaker, doesn't have a factory giving him his costumes. So we sort of cut up the fabric and stitched it up as if with every battle, there was no one else but himself. So we clumsily repaired it. This one, when, when I started um, with Film Illusions, they, they had gone a, quite far into the design thing. I think 
I looked at it and said we, we should add some detail, so th this started being added. But it struck me as just way too dark because I knew it was all going to be shot at night in a forest, or, or at least when we meet the character. And, um, and so it was a great collaboration. There's a lot of fine points that I don't think an audience knows anything about. But that's a huge part of what creating a costume is uh, after the kind of great yeah. sketch is done. You can't have a show like this without having the big bad. So let's talk about the white dragon and the costuming mm -hmm. and going from comic book to what we have over there. When Robert Patrick was first cast, we we knew where we were heading, yeah. but they got the body mold of his body to get going, and then they realized that we had to make him even buffer than he really is. Then uh, there's a bodysuit <laughs> with, with rubberized muscles that they've cast from, from these that uh -huh. they've sewn onto an underbody uh -huh. suit. He looks but very excited about it. <laughs> he, he's, he's a charming and hilarious man. Mm. The earliest white dragons were a little under panty. Mm -hmm. And after the very first full costume was made and we all looked at pictures, I think it was James Gunn who said, I'm not crazy you know, about that area. And so I sort of went into hyperdrive, like thinking about about alternate. Now that you say that, it's all I can no, look sorry. at. I should, I know. What made you want to get into oh. costume design? I. I was sort of not happy with my job, and I was thinking, what, what do I, what do I love? I, I give this advice now to young people. Like, if you don't know what direction you should go, and think what you would do at the weekend. I would go to a fabric store. I would make something. I used to make all my own clothes till I had to do it for a living, and then, <laughs> then it was slightly. Then you're like, I'll just no, buy my stuff. I'll just and buy make it. Them. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> And then I, I love stories because I, I think costume designers all are as interested in the storytelling as the costume. Mm -hmm. It's the pleasure of a character and a story arc and how the costume helps tell that. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought, well, what, what combines all of that? And I realized it was costume design.